Hey folks, Azure Cosmos TV, live TV. I'm Mark Brown. Uh, welcome, episode 84. We're gonna talk about benchmarking and performance for Azure Cosmos TV. Uh, having some technical issues with my Elgato key lights. I uh, can't get one of them to work. So uh, I have some strange kind of ghostly lighting going on in here uh, right now. But uh, enough of that, let's uh, introduce our guest. I have uh, Sergey and Marcelo here with us this week. Sergey, how are you? Good, good. Thanks, Mark. Uh, glad to be here again. Again, uh, I know. <laughs> this is your, what, is it, you've been on the show, what, tw two times before? Uh, two or three. Two yeah. or three, yeah. So you're a frequent flyer. That's good. And uh, yeah. Marcelo, your first time here. You want to just uh, introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, hey, Mark. Thanks for having us here. My first time here. Um, <clears throat> I'm Sergey Spear. I work as the Cosmos GVB uh, Global Black Belt and pretty much a specialist also in Cosmos DB. So thanks for having us again. Yeah, it's great having you guys on. Uh, and this is a great topic. Uh, I like talking about uh, benchmarking and performance. Uh, I think we're a pretty good database when it comes to uh, performance and things like that. And so of course, anything you're doing to, uh, to show how awesome that is, <laughs> it's really, it's certainly and we're cool. going to show it in action today. <laughs> That's you awesome are. Part. This is awesome. I love this. So, all right, man. I'm not going to get in your way anymore here. Uh, I know you want to show kind of a few slides, kind of set up uh, what you're going to show us today, and then uh, we'll get to the action. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. So let's uh, let's jump right in. So we'll uh, what we want to talk about today is challenging and our approach to benchmarking and load testing Azure Cosmos DB, and in principle. Um, how would you approach benchmarking uh, distributed NoSQL database um, uh, to customize that benchmarking to your specific application needs? There are several benchmarking load testing tools like YCSB, which traditionally used has been used to simulate and measure database scalability. Uh, we actually have a really good YCSB adoption for Azure Cosmos DB benchmarking, uh, which uh, documented, I put the link here, and I believe Mark had a session uh, prior to show, which was shown this already. Uh, this, this is great uh, tool and great ability to benchmark the database itself, but it has a set of disadvantages when it comes down to measure it in terms of your specific application workload, your specific application use case, because usually the benchmark was designed to has a scalability of database itself, kind of like scale it until you break it instead of running specific application workload. Uh, and uh, the pros of this was it's really good to simulate key value store at scale. Uh, and it's a good tool to measure the database scalability latency on this load uh, and, and see the consistency uh, and also outliers. Uh, but it's not representative of specific application schema. It's hard to customize it. Cannot really measure effectively index and overhead because this is where the it depends, right? So like, like yes, uh, we can say that one kilobyte are you uh, write will be five are use uh, like one kilobyte document write will be five are use and read would be one are you, uh, but. Um, what if as a document has 20 properties? Now it's now to say, well, it depends. So this is where the simulating those things will uh, make it more tailored to your application workload. And um, uh, the other big disadvantage of YCSB like benchmarking, it cannot really effectively simulate custom queries. So it's it was really good for measuring and simulating key value, like uh, the crude operations and point lookups, but it was not really good at simulating query types because it doesn't really have effective mechanism to simulate the query data variability uh, and use that data variability to simulate the queries and try to run different type of queries. I think this is a, <clears throat> you hit on a couple of really key points there. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Benchmarks like YCSB are just kind of like benchmarks in other areas like TPC and all the other kind of variants of that. Yes. And what you end up with is, you know, people like us, like people who make databases and for for the for the market, um, uh, will create a database that is written for the benchmark, if you will, uh, not written for 
kind of a customer and, and their use case. I'm not saying we do that, but that's actually not how we do it. But uh, but it is, <laughs> we do know that vendors do in, do engineering on their databases uh, to help them for improve the performance of a specific benchmark. Uh, and you know that, that makes sense. I mean, at one level, YCSB and TPC and other variants like that make sense because you need kind of a common yardstick to measure uh, them across each other. Uh, however, kind of taken to the extreme, you end up with what I'm suggesting or what I what I've seen happen is that uh, database vendors will go and um, and basically code to the benchmark rather than coding. To, and I'm not suggesting that they don't code for uh, custom scenarios, but or customers, but it, uh, for having a way to measure that is just is something that's not there. And I mean, I'm glad you guys have built. So that is absolutely true. Yeah. So with that in mind, what we uh, like as we are realizing the challenges of this approach, um, uh, looking at it differently, there is a new set of tools, which kind of like new benchmarking set of tools, which was trying to build around the limitations and try to extend this approach to be able to be customizable, to be able to define your own schemas and define your own workload patterns. Um, uh, and, and those tools are like Cassandra Stress and NoSQL Bench, which is not just Cassandra, but was extended to other technologies. Uh, and, and those tools are sort of the next evolution of benchmarking. Uh, but they are also still have some limitations and uh, they are a little more complex. And, and the reason why is one is they are based on the YAML config files, which are pretty challenging to like customize, uh, to define. Uh, and also they depend on plugin implementations for clients, which often too generic. So like when you try to customize it for your workload, you would have to end up extending the client. So. Um, uh, our goal was to take that approach and simplify the customizations in the user-friendly JSON config template and allow flexibility to take advantage of all the Cosmos-specific client options to be able to really test, uh, instead of being generic for every database, being really good for Cosmos DB. And that's what we try to do here. Uh, and at the end, um, and in addition to this, we want to go beyond those simple key value store lookup operations to be able to extend to different types of queries as much as possible. Because this is where we see the uh, problem with uh, being, since Cosmos is RU driven, throughput driven, and uh, RU per query is really, it depends type of uh, question from the workload, scalability, and also cost estimate approach. This tool can be actually used to estimate that RU per query for your specific workload uh, and, and give you much more accurate result. Uh, we share the link here to the repo we developed. And I'm going to jump real quick into the documentation and the repo itself, how it's organized and how the tool can be used before we're going to go into the actual demo uh, specific details. Uh, so. The repo has a documentation as far as configuration options. Uh, there is a generic section for configurations uh, as far as the client connectivity, duration of the test, uh, whether we want to print out client stats or not, et cetera. Uh, and then there is a set of uh, per type operation where you define the type for query, for point read, for create, for update, uh, and parameters. Um, and to showcase, I'm not going to go into details because I want to uh, leave more uh, to kind of like try to correlate the configuration with the actual test running. But I'm going to show how it looks like in a template. Uh, if you go to the repo itself, we have that uh, template config doc um, here, and which sort of pre-populated with some, uh, you can call it default or just uh, placeholder values to try to understand how it works. So like in the generic section, we have uh, client connection endpoint, database container. Uh, we also added the preferred regions if you want to test multi-regions in and the duration of the test. Uh, and those are the client stats and result uh, parameters you can overwrite. And then the load config is pretty much the meat of the configuration where you define the test counts, kind of like the thread counts, intervals, uh, delay between the executions. Uh, and then 
uh, we have application name, which client can use it, and then we can use it in the monitoring to actually uh, get telemetry uh, defined for, uh, and, and then you have a different sections, whether it's a query, the point read, uh, in a query, obviously, you can have a query template parameterized. Um, in the point read, you'll have the partition key ID with the parameters, et cetera. And this is pretty much how it does. And at the end, we have uh, every one of them can have a list of parameters, which can bind to parameters either defined in the JSON template based on your document schema for your application. Basically, if you can take your class object, parameterize it, and put it here, this will drive your test and the simulation against your test. So that's that's in a nutshell how that tool is dis designed. Um, you can easily extend this tool to um, add your own libraries, add your own classes, et cetera. I'm going to now turn it to Marcelo, who can go over in details uh, and show the simulation of the tool, how it runs against uh, um, his a little more detailed definition of uh, that sample. OK. Thanks. All right, uh, Marcelo, uh, you want to show us uh, show us how this thing works? Sure. Let's <clears throat> let's see the tool in action. So let me just switch my screen here. All right. So first, let me show <clears throat> the setup of my uh, account. So I have a Cosmos NoSQL account running in South Central US. Uh, one. Uh, database uh, payments, one container transaction, which is uh, configured for 100,000 are used. <clears throat> and let me just navigate to the container to show. Give me a second, it loads. <clears throat> so here you have the database collection. Let me show uh, some sample items here. <clears throat> so this is a, a, a sample document here. Uh, uh, just to, to explain the, the, the concept of the demo. So uh, we are trying to simulate a financial uh, workload. <clears throat> so pretty much mixing uh, tr financial transactions, for, for example, payments in, in stores and uh, balances, so account balances. So pretty much uh, 10,000 simultaneous uh, point read requests, reading balances, a couple of queries, <clears throat> uh, 5,000 simultaneous queries, uh, simulating the read statements of, for example, querying uh, the top 50 uh, transactions for uh, each particular account. And at the same time, uh, creating 5,000 um, transactions per second. <clears throat> so creating new, 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 uh, and new transactions. In uh, simulating, for example, around 1,000 uh, upsurts for uh, a particular account. So simulating, um, for example, a up, um, uh, profile change in balance change or something like that. And one thing to mention here is that we are also mixing uh, two different uh, entity types in this container. So let's just uh, have a simple query here. Let me just expand. <clears throat> so for this particular account, my container is uh, partitioned by account ID. So all the transactions uh, are located within the same logical partition um, <clears throat> as the account balance. So this first record is pretty much uh, the account balance, so the account details. So account number three, first name is equal, uh, balance 7,492, <clears throat> and a couple of transactions for this account. So um, <clears throat> it's complicated to see here. Give me a second. <clears throat> All right, so let's um, let's move to the <clears throat> the next detail. So the test is already running. <clears throat> uh, so this is in the statistics for the last fifteen uh, minutes. As you can see, you have uh, over a million, uh, almost one point two million requests uh, per per minute running in this account. <clears throat> Uh, as you can see, we have no throughput running and about 80% usage for this uh, container. So where are you? Go. So where's the the load being hosted? That's being oh, put on. The got it. So the load is is currently running in this VM close to the the Cosmos account. So we have two instances uh, running, and I'll I'll show in a few seconds the the config for that and 
uh, some statistics in, in the VM as well. <clears throat> so for for this workload, we have uh, over uh, four uh, million <clears throat> uh, request units in a minute window here. <clears throat> uh over almost uh, around 80 percent utilization and as you can see the workload is pretty much evenly distributed so the 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 tool itself is not just a hammer <laughs> they are trying to hammer the account so we could uh, actually use uh, the the tool to simulate and check for example if your partition key is good enough for for that particular workload if you're distributing even the the evenly uh, either the, the compute, the request, or uh, the storage for that particular account. So in this case, we have <clears throat> 10 partition, uh, physical partitions, and you can see that it's pretty much evenly uh, distributed. So uh, that's, a, that's a good sample. That's a good workload. But we could simulate, for example, uh, unbalanced workloads as well. <clears throat> Are you? Uh, this is just basically the straight up insights blade. In yes. Our yes Azure that's portal. correct so this okay. is a built-in built-in in the portal just just you just need to go through uh the the menu the monitor menu just go to insights and you have uh, everything set for you are there <clears> any, throat> are throat> there any throat> custom ones you you recommend people uh create or look at uh when they're running these tests that uh, you think might be helpful yes absolutely and i pre uh, i also posted in the in the ah. GitHub repo, a couple of go. queries. <laughs> <laughs> I just somehow have a knack for asking uh, leading questions or questions that just lend themselves to segueing to the next thing you're going to say. So I don't. Yeah. I don't so know for 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 this uh, load test to be well planning usage, uh, we enabled the diagnostic settings. So just need to uh, <clears throat> bound a log analytics uh, workspace to our Cosmos account and um, use some uh, categories here <clears throat> that we can collect uh, very interesting data and, and I can explain a little bit uh, what uh, what I prefer, uh, what I put published in, in the repo, some interesting queries. So this first one, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm just getting a sample for the last 30 minutes. And one interesting thing is that the application, uh, the application name in the in the config file, we can use to filter uh, the proper workload we're trying to find. Got it. Yeah. Basically, just like so, using a user agent kind of uh, with the yes, application name in exactly. here. Yes, exactly. So I named my uh, my workload here as demo create transaction for create operations, demo query transaction for the query. And we could have multiple queries, multiple reads, multiple create different creates and find all of them and split by uh, group by the application name and check the behavior of each uh, workload. So now, as you can if, see, if I wanted to scale that out, right, because we're a scale out database and you know, what yep. we tell people is, Hey, you can scale out your, your compute as well. Right. You just need to match up the number of physical partitions you have. Uh, if you're yep. doing something like a, well, basically with anything uh, yep. there. So I could do that as well, I guess, and just use a number or something to indicate uh, the SDK instance where I'm, where you're generating this load from, is that? Uh, we do, we do have some <clears throat> some uh, configs. So, for example, the desk count, the, the the tool itself does not create the the Cosmos account. Uh, we can uh, the user can create your your own account. For you example. want some help with that? You know, I'm the resource provider guy for Cos. I create ARM <laughs> templates in my fleet. Yeah, so we can we can definitely help. work on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I see, you have a, I see you have a you, you have a CLA or not a CLA, but people can contribute there right at the yes. at the bottom there. So all right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're running. Go ahead, sir. Uh, but what Mark is saying is actually, if you want to simulate multi compute environment, uh, you can simply run it from like two VMs and just annotate yeah. exactly the same config, but annotate like VM one as a prefix to the application. Uh, and use that as a like balancing if you want to test it out as well. Actually, yeah. could I? You could even make this even easier. Could you just uh, provision like functions instances, and you can configure the size. Like I'm guessing you want to configure a specific size of VM, or you need to right to match whatever your workflow is going to be. But you could yeah. do that for an Azure function, and then just basically do a git deploy in your in your ARM template or your bicep this thing, and then just HTTP trigger to fire it up. I mean, um, 
anyway, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, I got vacation coming up here next week. Uh, maybe when, uh, when no one's looking, just don't, sh don't tell my family. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll contribute, a, I'll submit a PR on you guys. See if I can help make this awesome. a little uh, smoother. So yeah, this is cool looking. I love what I'm seeing here uh, with this. So, so sorry, I interrupted with all that. No, yeah. Not at all. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Going. So, uh, for example, uh, different queries that we uh, prepared and published here, the number of uh, requests per second running. So we are about 18,000 uh, requests per second for, for this account. And one that I really, if you're running multi-region, uh, you can see the, the requests coming from different regions and, and the split by region here as well. But the one I really want to show is this one. So uh, we, uh, Sergey and I used it this uh, as a benchmarking with uh, uh, some customers as well. <clears throat> so this one can show us the percentile, the, the percentile for duration in the backend. So we have more, almost 20,000 uh, requests per second running for this particular account. And as you can see, the percentiles, the duration percentile, the response time is still very slow, very, <laughs> very low, sorry. So <clears throat> to, to see, for example, in a P99 for a uh, read operation, a point read operation, uh, well, it's kind of weird. That should be around one millisecond, but it's, it's uh, probably rounding, uh, truncating the data here. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're getting into nanoseconds now, or microseconds maybe, uh, fast. <clears throat> But let's say let's say the create the creation operation that should be the the uh, slowest one right the, the, so it's about five milliseconds so you're you're uh, still uh, I think our SLA right so is, why, that, that's uh, why an index, or sorry is that that's an indexed right sorry that's an indexed right or indexing off uh no the index is uh, customized i'll i'll, I'll cancel okay, okay. You're we are not indexing everything in that uh, container but we are indexing uh three uh, custom uh, attributes here <clears throat> to support a query so the 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 percentiles the response time for the database is awesome it's awesome and the test is running for about one hour i guess <clears throat> And also the very first one is actually the, the latency for that custom query we run in as well. So it's not just a plain yep. key value lookup. It's, I think like we're doing the top 10 or top 50, right? Top 50. By partition key. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Because query obviously going to be run slower than a point read uh, yep. in there. And so because you're going through the query engine, of course. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's jump to the, to the, uh, to the running demo. So I had two instances here, but why two? I'm trying to follow all the, the best practices for our SDK, our .NET SDK. This code is uh, published and it's just open source, just need to clone and customize or contribute. So I'm trying to follow all the best practices for the, the SDK and uh, keep one instance for each 50,000 uh, RUs. So I have two instances here. As you can see, this is a 16 core VM running in Azure in the same region. We had about 70% utilization. And the interesting thing is the network. We are receiving over 200 megabytes, uh, megabits per second and pushing uh, over 100 uh, megabits per second. <clears throat> so uh, can you go back to that? Oh, sure. Well, so uh, can you talk about like how do people right size you know, VMs or compute to like operations and stuff they want to do in Cosmos? Did you? Are there any observations you've made as to like, hey man, okay, we got a 16 core VM. I can I can uh, easily run X the number of RU or physical partitions and at X number of uh, operations per second. Is there do you get any kind of um, sense of that when you were when you guys were developing this or just kind yes, of <clears throat> pretty much around eight cores per fifty thousand RUs. Okay, so eight core per physical partition, I guess. Uh, oh, is that right? No, 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 it's 10K. No, per five. Oh, five, okay, so eight cores for five physical partitions, okay. Yeah, uh, and one thing that <clears throat> Sergey mentioned in the config, since I'm running, I'm, in this case, hammering the database, 
that's not a good idea to turn those uh, those uh, options here. So that would flood the, the machine with the statistics and uh, with the results, uh, which makes no sense in this particular case. Uh, right. I mean, jamming stuff through basically standard out is kind of a way to kill uh, performance. Yeah. Right? So, it it yeah, also would kill the networking, like what you yeah. Marcel was showing. Your you even though you may have some spare CPU cycles, you may be exhausting VM uh, network throughput. Uh, and that's another thing to call out when you do the test. If you want to do a benchmarking test, you want to pick a VM or any container with accelerated networking yeah, right. where you need more than, at least more than four cores. Right, which is why so, if you were going to do something like in a functions instance, you obviously want to stay away from like free tier and other stuff like that. I think you'd need to be yes. in your premium tier uh the ASC environment certainly you can basically run your own yeah because this is where you would see the outliers will creep up on both yeah. like not necessarily on the back end but on a uh on uh end-to-end -end outliers i mean it's the, uh, the point here is to see how this thing is going to perform in production a certain load provision production <laughs> surfaces like compute yes production <laughs> yeah. And, and compute yeah 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 that uh, that makes sense uh are you uh, so for your writes? Are you disabling uh, response on write? Uh, yes. In the SDK? Okay. This this setting this setting here the print result record is pretty much uh, setting the, the SDK uh, to to avoid that response on write. Got it. Okay. So that that setting there is what's doing the override at the SDK level. Yes. Uh, exactly. exactly. Got it. So one thing that uh, I think it's pretty much worth mentioning that uh, you don't need to run with the hundreds of tasks here to achieve a high number as you can see i have just eight tasks here for for a query and uh, with two instances pretty much 16 queries uh, 16 threads uh, we are achieving 5000 simultaneous queries so we don't we don't need that amount of tasks what does the task uh, mean it's uh... it's a, a task in a dot net it's a, it's bound to a task in dot net <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the, the interval here is uh, said, for example, if you try to debug or if you try to test your own query or create, for example, and you want to give an interval to see, for example, the statistics in the screen and the console application, uh, you can set, for example, for every se every second, one thousand milliseconds, and you can see the 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 results popping uh, on your screen. So. Uh, the, the tool is not meant all, uh, only to do a high velocity test, a high volume test. You, you can also use <clears throat> the tool, for example, to test a new query in your in your environment. You, you get a new query, put put in the in the, the config file and test how, for example, how many RUs are consumed for the particular query, or even test, uh, for example, index impact for a a new document. <clears throat> so. Uh, you don't, you don't need volume to test that. So because the the client statistics will print in the screen, uh, how many are used that particular common cost? And I'll I'll show in a few a few seconds. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. So the application name is one thing that is important to to use. So with that we can uh, uh, filter in the that particular query in the, in the log analytics. Uh, which query is uh, actually the one you are executing. So we could have multiple queries here and we could have, for example, uh, query uh, statement, uh, transaction one, transaction two, or whatever, you name it. In, in this particular case, you are using a select uh, top 50 records, simulating a statement read and ordering, uh, filtering by transaction since you're using multiple uh, entities in the same container and sorting by the timestamp uh, in the descending order. <clears throat> uh, and one thing uh, that Sergey mentioned, we do have, we do support some parameters, parameter types. So you just need to specify an array here. And uh, for example, we are uh, using a count ID as a parameter. We are using, we are parameterizing <clears throat> the query to use that account ID. And this value here, uh, when the application run, we will be bound with the with the values between this one. Pretty much a random random function 
and that will cast the output as a string since uh, we are using uh, uh, account ID as a partition key, we must uh, use a, a string type for, for that attribute. <clears throat> Uh, for point reads, um, we have the same thing. The, the difference is that the attribute called it's called a point reads. We do need to specify the partition key and ID. And I did that on purpose to, to show that we could use uh, account ID. <clears throat> Sorry, um, <clears throat> that's my fault. <laughs> so we could use the same parameter twice or many times in the in the uh, in the uh, parameter list here. <clears throat> so pretty much the, the same configuration. And this one is the, I guess, the, the funnest one. <clears throat> For uh, creates and upserts, we can specify whatever we want as the payload of this uh, attribute entity. We keep the, uh, you must keep the entity attribute, but whatever we think uh, this JSON, you can customize and add your own. So uh, if you want <clears throat> to, to add a larger document or uh, get your own uh, JSON schema, paste here, uh, choose a couple of attributes to parameterize <clears throat> and uh, create the, the parameters in the parameter section and run it. Um, partition key <clears throat> for both, uh, creates and upserts, uh, I'm specifying the partition key. Uh, <clears throat> and we do support hierarchical partitioning already in this, uh, in this tool. So if you have multiple uh, partitions, if you're using hierarchical partition, that just need to specify, oops, specify a new, uh, the second level of your Got partition. It. So you're treating it like an array like we do. <clears throat> yes, pretty much. Um, some interesting things here. So besides the, the random integer as a string, we have the random uh, int, integer. So the, the output in the JSON document will be uh, uh, integer type. It does support uh, unique identifiers, uh, date time, uh, pretty much a, a timestamp, and Boolean uh, attributes as well. <clears throat> and for upserts, it's pretty much the same. So but we added also a faker library. Uh, well, this is a pretty much common faker library in the .NET community. So we just need to, for example, I'm, I, I use that to create the, the, the sample data here. So uh, I created over uh, 10,000, yeah, 10 million uh, accounts. So I used <clears throat> this faker library to create, for example, handle names, uh, first, last name, uh, to populate the data. So we could extend, of course, add uh, more, uh, but it works. So that's cool. That's good to, to generate even uh, fake data. Uh, and one thing that uh, I forgot to mention is that we are also <clears throat> specifying here the option to to use the allow bulk operation in the back end, uh, in the client side. So. Uh, which means that pretty much the, the SDK you aggregate uh, the, the request and send a package of um, a request to the backend. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, people should play with that. Um, yes. Just to see the impact uh, that it can have because it's, uh, it's really about optimizing throughput consumption versus latency uh, in some cases, yep. right? Because it'll, it only, I think, We'll dispatch. I thought it was every second, but maybe it's a little. Maybe it's less than that. I know Matthias. Why Matthias would correct me on the spot? <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> uh, but I guess the way bulk mode is that it basically will hold a physical partition key's worth of data until it's got what it needs, and then dispatch that uh, as well as fast as it can, of course. But yeah, which is another reason why, by the way, uh, friends, that you want to make sure that when you're doing bulk operations, that you uh spread that load across as many partition keys as you can and as even away as you can uh, if you load them one partition key at a time functionally you're basically serializing everything to one partition yeah. so and matthias has a, an amazing uh, blog post about that explaining the logistics and how the sdk handles that yeah and i'm not using a bulk operation here because i'm pretty much simulating a very very high transactional yeah. uh, workload yeah. 
And just to, to showcase uh, how we can also um, use the, the, the tool for a very uh, small workload to test a, a specific workload, I create, I copied, pretty much copied the, the same uh, config file here. I zeroed the test count, which means I disabled that test. So I just <clears throat> set the, the point read operation to uh, one task, pretty much in series. Uh, serial execution and uh, running with intervals of uh, one second, 1,000 uh, milliseconds. So uh, let's run Yeah, let's see it in action. All right, here we go. Yeah. So <clears throat> as you can see, the, the client statistics prints the timestamp operation or any every single second. Uh, <clears throat> the operation name, uh, this number, the, the suffix number will uh, change if we try to run multiple tasks. As you can see, the point read operation is <clears throat> uh, really consuming. One are you? Uh, this is the client side uh, response time, so about 1.5 milliseconds, sometimes three, but on average less than uh, uh, less than two milliseconds for the round trip. <clears throat> and I also printed here uh, the region that the client is actually connecting to. So this is also fun to, when you're trying to, uh, to run using multiple regions, either multi-master or single master and testing failover. That's yeah. really cool to see the SDK <clears throat> changing uh, the, the, the regions. Yeah, I used to, that's a fun demo to show customers or just people in general. Uh, I used to do that yes. all the time. Basically the equivalent of kicking the plug out of the wall. It's <laughs> a <laughs> right there. So, I used the I guess it was uh, last week to to show to test for example even private endpoints, uh, multi-region with private endpoints, uh, failovers, uh, even removing a region to show what what's happened with the, the application while running. Yeah. So that that's cool, and <clears throat> for example during a failover you can you you can see the, the the two regions being contacted by the the SDK. It's kind of cool, the retry yep. without the, the proper error. Uh, another interesting thing that oh we have well two instances already running. I'll just um, stop one of them, or even both of them, and I'll change. Since we are, let me just undo whatever I did here. All right, <clears throat> not that much. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Let's uh, add a new attribute. We're using JSON, right? So uh, new oops, attribute. And Cosmos uh, Live TV. <clears throat> All right, since we uh, have a valid JSON, hopefully <laughs> we <we'll> start. <clears throat> so Pretty much that it's a right running. So we can uh, change since we're using a, a NoSQL database, we can uh, start testing, we start testing with new attributes. And for example, test the impact of uh, this new attribute in indexing, for example, or even removing indexing, whatever. So uh, it's quite flexible to, to, to use. Uh, how do I define the entities themselves that I want to use there? So I saw you were using Faker. Um, do you like prototype out a, a POCO of some sort? And then uh, right, how do you do that? I mean, I saw you were using Faker um, yes. names in there. I'm guessing the code in here that executes picks that up and then. Uh, the, the, the code, of course, needs some improvement in the, <laughs> in the tool itself. But uh, I'm pretty much treating everything as a, a JSON attribute. So uh, uh, using NewtonSoft um, <clears throat> J object. So uh, everything within the entity attribute is a J object. I so I just, I just need to bind whatever the parameter is to that key and it's done. Oh, I, so, so you're just defining some JSON to J object in code and yeah. whatever the, and what do you define as JSON is your object model basically. And then that's yeah. that, that. sort of a dynamic object. Yes. Yeah. Dynamic. Yeah. yeah right. So, okay. Yeah. One thing I want to mention, um, Marcel didn't mention it earlier, but uh, it, it does support list of attributes. So like if you want to have 
um, a diff like for example, you have uh, simulated in the catalog and you have five categories. You can actually create a list of those five categories and then parameterize at least attribute to be like, pick one of the list randomly. And that would get insert too. So like you can predefine a list of categories, list of products, and then simulate the randomness of that list or sequential, kind of like the sequential round roundabout. Yeah, okay. Uh, user here says you can use system.text.json too. Uh, yeah, I suppose you could for that, I guess, and just use that for doing your 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 serialization, I guess, that's going on in there. So at the code level, <clears throat> pretty much the entity attribute will be bound to this J object. And yeah. you just need to, to bound whatever the parameter that matches the the values be bound to the that attribute yeah okay this <clears throat> all right so this makes sense so you've got basically poco's created that define the action or the activity or the task i guess if you will yeah. uh, and then you're just dynamically binding whatever the json is for the entity into that itself i see and there's your parameters your partition key so can i see can i see the code where that object gets executed can you go to the i guess the references for sure sure let's go let's go there let's find the well the code i i, I pretty much needs some well improvement but okay. <laughs> that's what contributions but, are for yes awesome <laughs> so once once you have the creator the upsert they are treated the same way uh inside the 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 code so we get the entity and I use this method, the math parameters, to inspect the values, all the values, looking for the uh, at whatever. Let's go to implementation. So this builds a hash map looking for the star. And it's uh, if you're using, for example, lists and whatever, it's uh, it's called recursively uh, to, <clears throat> to create the, well, it, it works with arrays as well. So got it. And, once I have the, the full path, so I'm mapping uh, the JSON path to the, the parameter. And once I have that, it's uh, quite easy to, let's jump back to, <clears throat> to copy the entity object and bind, uh, bind the, the parameters uh, for each um, generated value. So if you, use, if you specify multiple times the same, the same parameter name, it will, um, well, use the same value as well. Yeah. It's not a random. It will bind the same value. <clears throat> no, this is very cool. Uh, I like I like your approach to uh, making it simple to just create kind of uh, plain JSON objects, uh, and then essentially just suck them into your execution framework here and start hammering away. I, this is this is nice. And one thing that's uh, interesting to mention is that we do support uh, sequential. Uh, like a monotonically increasing uh, attributes. Uh, it's a thread safe, of course, but within the same instance. So if you run, if you try to run multiple instances of the, the same command line, uh, you generate uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 That wouldn't work across instances, of course, right? This yes. is the, yes. the problem with uh, distributed systems in general. Yes. Uh, is uh, doing something like monotonically increasing or an auto yeah. increment. Uh, this is this is a feature I hear this every once. So one way to simulate conflicts. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just uh, I, uh, is hey, why don't you guys give me an auto increment? Usually from a SQL guy, right? And, and I'm like, yeah. because we're a distributed database and in distributed systems, doing monotonically increasing uh, anything uh, is a surefire way of killing availability at some point in your life. Um, so you should try and stay away from that. And, and they walk away confused. Anyway, the uh, reason I bring it up is um, the way you can do that is implement a distributed lock. I had a guy on the other week um, from our yeah. MS Learn team. Uh, he built a distributed lock. He actually showed it on Cosmos Comp uh, back in April. Uh, and we, I built a distributed uh, lock as well, uh, or my team did. And uh, so we kind of compared notes uh, on this. And he took, he's like, oh, I like the way you did that. And I looked at his stuff, and I like the way he did his. So anyway, we're going to release the distributed lock as a sample here uh, pretty soon. Yeah, so I, people want to create want to. a distributed lock. Oh, you watch that show? 
Yeah, I watched so, it yesterday. That episode was. Oh, awesome. you did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if people want to create a distributed lock, well, they can use that sample that's on my show from, I guess, about three, two, three weeks ago. Uh, or you can see the sample we'll come out with this summer uh, that we're publishing, and you can you can use that as well. So but anyway, so if people want to do this in a distributed uh, systems fashion, uh, they can go and just roll out basically a, an endpoint that doles out monotonically increasing whatever and they can hit it from as many instances as they want so uh so party on cool uh this is great this is cool i'd like to i do like the approach uh you've, you've basically taken uh and made very easy that config piece uh so they can test these different um different document shapes sizes data types whatever uh that's within there that's i think the uh, you optimize this in a, in a way i think that makes sense yeah, that that's that was the the idea that Sergey and I uh, discussed in the past to to make it simple, and at the same time flexible enough to to test uh, our our product. So it's kind of cool. This is cool. Uh, people can go and check it out. I'm going to put the repo up here, um, so people can go and and clone it or fork it. Hopefully, they fork it and then submit a PR. Um, I'll try to do a PR for a ARM template for you guys. I got a, I mean, I have a bunch of them that I've got that deploy like an Azure function. Uh, I may do a very, I may do just single instance and then let you guys figure out how to go do the, I mean, doing multiple instances is easy. You just create like a loop inside your bicep template, uh, and then just create as many as you specify. And of course, everything else is just whatever, just drop down values. Like what? what SKU size do you want, all that other stuff. So uh, one thing that would be super cool, hey, this is an idea for someone out you, uh, someone maybe out there, uh, is having like a coordinator node uh, that you could run and then basically have like a backplane to each of the instances. Uh, they could like start and stop. They could, I don't know, change task numbers or uh, all kinds of funny stuff. This could get, I mean, this could be really fun. Um, People get some interest in there and, and want to contribute, huh? What do you say? Please do. <laughs> Please do, right? So yeah, this is this is really, really cool. I love the work you guys did. And I love that we've got, uh, you know, it's a benchmark framework for Cosmos, basically. And so people can take this, um, customize it to their, their needs with their own <clears throat> documents uh, and their own kind of workload requirements and uh, and just go at it. So I, you know, I think this is great. This will help a lot of people uh, out there that want to um, essentially kind of benchmark it. Uh, and also, you know, it's interesting too. I wonder if this could help. Like one of the things that's really challenging <clears throat> for customers is uh, like capacity planning. Like, yeah. you know, we have that capacity tool or capacity calculator. Which, by the way, next week's show capacity calculator. Please tune in. Um, we'll have a we'll have a guest host too. This will be it'll be exciting. Um, but it, it it's just based upon kind of uh, historical numbers that we kind of know about things. You can't get to really precise numbers, and it, there's some level of complexity that that it kind of misses. That I um, I think if you had if people if use something like this, they could dial it into more precisely what their needs are. Uh, and get a better idea like, okay, this is the amount of throughput I need to provision to handle this number and this type of operations uh, within there. So um, I think this could actually, um, this could make a good way to do capacity planning uh, as well. So right on, uh, is that it? Anything else you wanna share? Oh, I think I, <clears throat> I demoed pretty much everything. Oh, just one thing. Uh, there are two releases here, the version uh, 0.2. You just need, if you don't want to <clears throat> to uh, download the, the code, to clone the code and build yourself, you just need to go to release and download the, <clears throat> uh, the, the version compiled and just change your config file and start running. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. People should download and build it though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Everybody's a developer here, right? I think. So, uh, okay. Yeah, this is really, really cool. Uh, I love it. You guys are great. Uh, I love having GBBs on. You guys are just fantastic. Um, kind of, you guys are 
make fun stuff uh, that customers we'll love. Learn, we'll learn from the best, Mark. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> nice. You can't butter me up. It's not possible. Uh, you, guys, <laughs> you guys do the best stuff because you work with the customers who are basically asking you for this type of thing. So um, I love I love where this comes from, I guess, in that you don't you don't spend time building stuff that doesn't actually help uh, people who are trying to use uh, uh, Cosmos. So uh, this is really great. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, butter him up. No. <laughs> Not possible. You, I'm not. You no, know, you can't butter me up. So, well, hey, folks, uh, this is awesome. Thanks for sharing uh, this, and uh, thanks for being on the show. And um, you guys, come on back anytime, uh, whenever you want. If you got something cool to show. I know that people love kind of the stuff you guys create. Uh, so, come on back anytime. Sounds great. Sure. Cool. Thanks for for having us, Mike. Uh, Mike. Yeah, thank you, uh, Marcelo. I hope you feel a little better, man. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. My voice is kind of fading. Yeah, take some Nyquil and just go go conk out for six to six seven hours, and then maybe you'll all be better. So right on. Uh, oh, checking comments here. Uh, oh, comment from Sean again. He's excited about that tool. This is awesome. I'm excited about it too. I really think this is. Uh, this is some really cool stuff that you guys have created. And the fact that it's built for really customers, uh, I think it's just amazing. So thanks again. Well, hey, folks, uh, thanks for joining us this week. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, just some uh, typical announcements here. Uh, you know, we run a monthly user group or a monthly meetup uh, out on meetup.com. Uh, so come and join the community. Uh, new topics every month, uh, new community uh, folks for Cosmos sharing what they know. Uh, so come and check us out uh, as AKS, aka.ms slash Cosmos DB user group. Uh, this is episode, let me check, 84, uh, which means there's 83 other episodes that we've created for this show. Uh, so why not uh, spend a weekend, uh, grab a maybe a box of wine or something else, I guess, I don't know, some beer or just some soft drinks or whatever and some snacks and curl on up and watch all 84 episodes of Azure Cosmos DB Live TV. Uh, you can join us here on aka.ms slash Cosmos DB Live TV. That'll take you to our page on GitHub. So um, that's it for us this week. Uh, next week, we're going to have uh, Tara on our show and I can't find my countdown. Where is my, huh. oh, sorry. Oh, hold on folks, this is terrible. Amateur hour. Uh, hey folks, join us next week. I'm gonna be on vacation for about six weeks, uh, but we're gonna have guest hosts uh, coming in. Next week, we're gonna have uh, Tara Batia, who's a PM on our team. And she's gonna guest host uh, Cosmos TV Live TV. So please join us. And uh, watch our episode next week. We're going to have uh, one of our PMs, Abhinav Tripathi, and he's going to talk about the Cosmos DB capacity calculator. Uh, maybe folks haven't heard too much about that. Um, so come and check it out. Uh, that'll be uh, here for you next week. Uh, same time, Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, or you can catch it on demand uh, as well. So, uh, Sergey, Marcelo, uh, thank you both very much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. You.